everyone. Welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about Red Hat OpenShift 4.x solution architecture. And this solution architecture, I will explain you in the two method, two scenarios. One is OpenShift on vSphere, and another one is OpenShift on HP, Havlet Packet Enterprise. And finally, we can also cover the architectural component. And in our demo environment, I have the existing Red Hat OpenShift and it is running on vSphere and we are using the physical resource HPE hardware. OK, so let's start with the Red Hat OpenShift 4.x. That means any four series all solution architecture when running on vSphere, the architecture is same. So within the architecture, I will try to explain the OpenShift deployment process so that architecture is easy to understand. And normally we require a internet access and we are using vSphere means our main management component within the vSphere is vCenter server to manage all ESX host and virtual machines. And we also require a physical resources and we also need a provisioning network. These are the three pre-requirements within our solution. OpenShift when we are planning to running on vSphere. And another key component is DNS server to maintain all the OpenShift master node and worker node records. And also even vCenter also when we are planning to install vCenter, the pre-requirement is we should have a DNS server. Our vCenter host name and IP must be registered, create a host record in DNS server. Similarly, all our OpenShift nodes records should be updated in DNS server. and we have a DN uh, OpenShift we can install in a multiple methods. One recommended method is IPA method. IPA full form is installer provision infrastructure method. During this method, it pre requirement is we have to use DHCP server. DHCP server means dynamic host configuration protocol, and it will allow you to assign IP address automatically. So we can prepare a one dedicated scope for the OpenShift master nodes and compute nodes. OK, that is the reason within our solution. This is also the key component and another component is router. This router will we can maintain either a physical router or we can use a software router. That means software or hardware router and it must have a access to the Internet. OK, and one another key component is we have to provision a helper node. This helper node we can also call it as provisioning node. And Red Hat recommendation is we can configure with either Red Hat 8 series OS or Red Hat 9 series version. Uh, and if you want to configure any third party Linux players also, it's okay to configure. But the best practice from Red Hat is we should go with a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 series or 9 series. And using this provisioning node, we can start deploying the OpenShift cluster. OK, so whenever we initiate the OpenShift cluster initiation using the provisioning node, this provisioning node must have a connectivity to the vCenter server. That means we should have a trust relationship between vCenter and our helper node. We should have a trust and it is also have a connectivity to the provisioning network. And using this provisioning node, when we initiate the kickstart, the OpenShift cluster installation. First, it will prepare a bootstrap node. This bootstrap node is only for temporary until the cluster setup is complete. OK, once the OpenShift cluster setup is completed, this bootstrap will automatically remove. OK, and using this bootstrap node, what it will do is it will prepare a one template. That template is Red Hat Core Operating System in short form RCHOS. RC Red Hat RHCOS. Sorry, RHCOS Red Hat Core Operating System. This RHCOS will help us to using the template, it will deploy the master nodes. Master nodes, we can also call it as controller node, and minimally it will deploy three nodes that is only the recommended one once the master nodes are deployed and one of the master node will help to provision a worker nodes as well and worker nodes there is no limit either we can provision three worker nodes or we can provision more than three and worker node we can also call it as compute nodes once the master node and worker nodes are provisioned this bootstrap node will remove automatically so whenever if you want to view the openshift solution architecture this is only high level solution architecture view 
And another key components are within our DNS server, we should require to configure a static DNS records. Those are those DNS records are APA VIP and also the ingress VIP and even the router also have a connectivity to our master nodes and worker nodes and the router is connected to the internet network so that when we plan to do any updates and upgrades all the updates and upgrades from the red hat it will automatically get the necessary updates whenever is necessary and APA VIP is connected to the master nodes and the ingress VIP is connected to the worker nodes. OK, so this is the solution architecture and the components means when, if, what is a solution architecture components means these are all the components master nodes and compute node and also the provisioning node. But in the vCenter perspective, there are some additional components also added. I will explain you in the following slide. So in the Red Hat OpenShift 4.x solution component, normally as we know OpenShift is a platform built for the cloud native application development and deployment across the hybrid cloud and a standard OpenShift container platform in short form OCP installation create the following vCenter resources. When we run the solution on vSphere, there is some additional components. It will create one folder and one tag category and also the one tag and virtual machines, it will create one template and one temporary bootstrap node. This temporary bootstrap node only during the cluster setup only. Once the cluster setup is completed, it will remove automatically. That's why we call it as temporary bootstrap node. And the three control plane node, control plane node means master nodes and three compute nodes or in other words, we call it as worker nodes. So this information, if you want to verify from the lab system, let me connect to the lab server. And if you see here, we can have a vCenter server, data center, cluster 01. We have one ESXi host. This ESXi host is running on one of the Havlet Packet Enterprise Prolian DL380 model. And within this server, we have a OpenShift helper VM. But you can see from here, or else go to the VMs and templates tab. We can see there is one folder is created. This folder name is OCP11 VWM BVW. But the scenario is as per the solution architecture components, it's create one folder. This is the automatically created folder. And even in the summary tab, you can see the tags. There is a category one tag category is created for the open shift and also the tag also created okay so as per the solution component we have one folder one tag category and one tag and also we have a virtual machines those virtual machines have three master nodes three worker nodes and this is the template we have a one template also created Okay, so the same information only I explained here. One folder, one tag category, virtual machines. But the actual step-by-step -step OpenShift deployment process, I will show you in the late next session with the practical. And I will explain you the first pre-implementation steps. As seen in our solution architecture, we should do some requirements like DNS configuration, DHCP configuration. So in the later short bytes, I will explain you the first pre-implementation steps and followed by implementation process. And finally, we can talk about post-implementation steps. Okay. And so here is the diagram what we dis discussed until now. So folder, tag, tag category, virtual machines, template we have and temp temporary bootstrap node, it's already removed and we have a three control plane means three master nodes and compute node means three worker nodes okay and similarly this is the scenario OpenShift is running on vSphere environment, but some organization, they want to run OpenShift directly on a bare metal. So in during the bare metal scenario, we can use HPE hardware. So we can have a HPE Prolian DL380 generation 10. This is the reference architecture from Havlet Packet Enterprise. This is a already certified models. So using these models, let's say even the same like vSphere, vSphere we have all our virtual machines, control plane node and ma our master node or worker nodes are running as a virtual machine. But when it comes to the bare metal scenario, we have a three control plane physical nodes and we also have node one, node two, node three are nothing but a, it's a worker nodes or compute nodes. But normally control plane node, we can configure with a low configuration, one unit server is enough. And for the node one, node two, node three compute node, we are using a two U servers, two unit servers. 
and for storage we are using a nimble storage and to have a physical connectivity of network connection as well as provisional network plus internet access we are using a hp aruba switches and we we can use for remote management. We are using ILO network integrated light sort and we also have production network. But in our virtual environment, we create it's created automatically one helper VM. But in the physical environment, we have to use temporary bootstrap node. It is should be connected with the DNS, DHCP, HA proxy. That means load balancer or we can use either physical or you can use VM based supported infra. This temporary worker node or we can call it as helper node. It will help to provision all these nodes. And once the provisioning is completed, we can monitor this information using OCP portal. OCP means open shift container portal and we can log in with administrator user access, connect to this portal and we can access all this information. So to access this information, let's log into our lab system. Let's say we are connected to the Red Hat open shift OCP portal and we log in with the administrator account that is cube admin. This is a default administrator. Once we connect to the cube admin, we can see over View tab. What is the cluster name? The cluster version is OpenShift version 4.11. And we how many nodes in the cluster inventory? We can see six nodes, 360 pods are running, and two storage classes. So if you want to see the six nodes, you can just click on six nodes and we can see master zero, master one, master two. All the masters started with a OCP 4.11. That means 4.11 version. And worker nodes also, we have three worker nodes. OK, so this is the high level overview of OpenShift controller solution architecture when it is running on vSphere and when it is running on OC from the if you want to verify from OCP portal, this is the high level view. OK, so hope you got an idea how it will be, but it's subject to be customer's choice. So OpenShift can run on on premises, either bare metal or vSphere, or we can run it on cloud, private cloud, public cloud and hybrid cloud environments. Even vSphere also have a access capability to provide a hybrid cloud environment. So anywhere that's subjected to be customer's business requirement, according to the business logic only we can implement. But as a OpenShift administrator, we should know how we can implement and what is a pre-requirement implementation process and post implementation steps. OK, so that's it. Thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share and subscribe to the Gnan Cloud Garage channel. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.